how to help somebody quit OxyContin. Uh, this is a tough situation because a person, if they just suddenly stop and go cold turkey, it is met with a lot of issues uh, because at this point, typically they've go, they're going to go through withdrawal and it's a very difficult situation. Uh, the person is, uh, is in a difficult situation, they're feeling very uncomfortable, they're moody, irritable, nothing feels well, they feel an impending sense of doom, or doom. it's a very uncomfortable situation. So the best thing to do is to taper them. Um, some people could do this at home and just slowly reduce their dose by 10% uh, every week. And to the best thing to do is to speak with your healthcare professional about it so they can provide the tapering. But that being said, uh, some health healthcare professionals are not familiar with this, but the 10% rule is the way to go uh, to slowly reduce uh, over a long period of time and this helps prevent them from going through withdrawal. Um, the other option is to switch over to a safer medication and this is a better way to go. So this is opioid replacement therapy. So for example, if somebody's on Oxycontin or fentanyl or heroin, instead to get them on the replacement therapy, which is now called Suboxone. The uh, older one is methadone and this is being used less often. There's more difficulties with methadone and people can overdose and abuse it more so than Suboxone. Suboxone is a pill, whereas methadone is a liquid. And it's just easier overall to get on Suboxone, which is, um, prevents the withdrawal, but it doesn't give them the high. Uh, that's the main thing. So this now allows this person to function in their job, in society, um, and to slowly wean off the Suboxone instead of the drug of choice. Uh, the final step, as I said, is, is methadone is sometimes used. There's plenty of methadone clinics out there. Uh, this, the problems with this is that a person is tied to the pharmacy, so it's known as liquid handcuffs because they must go to the pharmacy every day to get their dose. Um, the same thing happens with Suboxone at first, but with developing trust with your healthcare professional and the pharmacist, they can give you some carries, meaning you take it home with you. Uh, the problem is that people can't abuse the methadone, they can abuse the Suboxone, that's the fear. But the, the idea, the goal here is to get on whether it's methadone or Suboxone, eventually to have carries and to be able to slowly wean off of this at the discretion of their family care physician or their addictionist and to eventually get off of the opioids. Now it's, it's a hard go, it's a tough process, but I'm someone to speak from my own experience that I got through it myself. It takes some work uh, and effort and it's not just a matter of, it's important as well to include in here that that this is where a, a good quality recovery requires other things. It's not just abstaining from the drug of choice. It also involves learning the life changes that are needed, how to cope with stresses, how to deal with adversity, how to um, speak up about problems, to, to, be, to lose this isolation part of things and internalization by speaking out to other people, by being involved in the community, by going to uh, recovery groups, whether it's 12-step or other ones, by uh, giving back to the community. These are really the long-term things that a person needs to have an enduring and good chance of recovery from OxyContin abuse. If you or a loved one are looking for help with substance abuse, call our 24-7 helpline at 1-800-615-1067. A caring addiction advisor is awaiting your call.